Yay. <laughs> so to make sure that I don't miss anything that's going on in our county, because we've got such great stuff happening. We also have the um, Effingham County Board. They did establish their Child Care Research Committee. Um, Norbert can speak more to that. Um, there's 13 members and the members will be determined at the February County Board meeting. Norbert, do you wanna to speak to that at all while you're here with us? I don't think there's much to be added right now, John. We, you know, uh, I think we're still in the process of trying to define exactly what this committee is expected to do. And they have not yet decided on who will be the members of the uh, committee. And I think maybe we are really should consider enlarging beyond the 12 or 13 because it's very uh, difficult to include all the different important stakeholders with, with that number. So we'll be talking to Jim next week about that. Great. Thank you for that. Um, as Norbert said, there's just so many stakeholders like we've experienced here in our own group. It seems like the 30 um, people that we have that are engaged, we need every one of them because they all represent different um, parts of our community. So um, Norbert did have a really fantastic idea. We're looking at having a listening session for our child care providers and um, somehow having them talk to this group once it's established, like having that happen right away so that um, the group has a sense of like where everyone is. We've done a lot of the research ourselves that we'll be able to share with this group. So hopefully they'll be able to have a jump start and be able to move forward quickly. Um, I also wanted to just give a big plug out to Carla, to Samantha, and um, the fantastic video that Kate led them through. That um, video is available and it shares um, wild, why childcare is so essential to Effingham County. I know from the library's perspective, we've had 24, or 20, um, 24 different um, people who have logged in to watch that video. So I'd really highly recommend if you wanna share that on a social media platform, that would be great. And I see that Cecily has joined us. So I'm gonna stop sharing. Hello. Welcome. How are you? We're good. We're looking forward to your presentation today. Yeah, I talked to, well, I think I guess it was Kate because um, Britain wasn't gonna be here. I can, I can do a presentation or I can just answer people's questions. I guess it depends on what the group knows and doesn't know. the. Um, I think you all have maybe talked to Britain about signing up for our um, kickoff sessions next week. Will there be a lot of presentations and the same one that I can give you now or we can just have a conversation about it. I can, Kate, what did you think? I guess I was communicating with Kate, so I'm not sure who's the yeah, lead. I, hi, Cicely, it's nice to see you. I think it would be helpful. Be, I think there's um, differing degrees of understanding of what the Birth to Five Action Council are all about. So maybe if you could just give like um, sort of an overview of that and then folks can ask questions. And I think there's some um, kind of questions about how the work that this group has been doing over the past year can feed into um, the, the work of the action councils. Okay, perfect. All right, so the um, Birth to Five Action Council, some might have heard of us when um, we were called Regional Community Systems with INCRA, we realized Anyway, that just name was a little big. And so we've now rebranded ourselves to Birth to Five um, Illinois and we will have the Birth to Five Action Councils. And so the work came out of the governor's funding, early, early childhood, early care funding commission that wrapped up last spring. Um, and so that commission really was tasked with just exploring how we can make our early learning system better in the state of Illinois. They came back with three recommendations um, the first of which was to explore if it makes sense to have one governing office for early learning. And so instead of a variety of offices having a variety of pieces of early learning, just for that to be housed in one place in the state. Um, the second one was the same, but around funding. And so instead of the various funding streams, there would just be one funding stream with, with the funding model um, that makes sense that could be applied you know, across the state, really centering equity so we can make sure our priority populations have the services they need. Um, those two lines of work are being explored by the Early Childhood Transformation Team, which is being led by Ceci Nyman and Teresa Hawley. Um, they're kind of just exploring what that looks like with the goal of bringing 
their report or recommendations to the governor at the end of this year. Um, the third line of work or third recommendation is what our office is charged with. And so that is that really right now, the state has no way really of knowing what the family and provider um, experience is with early learning decisions that they make. And so all of the funding and the slot gap analysis and all the things like that um, really still don't give narrative to like why parents aren't using services. And so even if you know that there are, you know, capacities in some places, but um, openings in other places, we don't really know why that is just looked at the data we have now. And so the funding commission said, hey, we need to replicate what other states have done in which we have a more localized way of gathering parent input and provider um, experience so that the state is not making these decisions based on data sets that aren't even always accurate. And so our office is charged with that. So we are going to be standing up 39 um, of these action councils. And they're 39 just because we chose the mapping of the regional offices of education. We just needed to kind of have a way to split the, the state up be try, to try to be representative. Um, and the regional offices of education kind of already have a map. So we just are using that mapping, not sharing really any priorities or staffing or anything with them, just kind of using that map to give us an idea of boundaries. Um, so the goal of these councils really would be to do the work of going into community getting a better understanding of what's happening, who is using services, who is not using services, how are people using services, what are the barriers to accessing services, um, kind of what's working, what's not working, where is there room and desire to expand services and what kind of services um, expansion do they need and how do how do we make that happen? So um, that, that may overlap. I'm not sure exactly what you guys have been doing. It, it may overlap. Um, there might be room for still expansion and the goal of the work in the action councils after they kind of gather this information with the help of our team will be to put that all into a report that will go to the governor's office, ideally at the same time that that funding commission, um, the excuse me, funding recommendations and government recommendations go. And so any decisions that are made around funding or governance or anything else that has to do with early learning, the goal would be that the what the community is telling us is really centered to those decisions. And so they don't just blindly say, hey, we have openings in pre-K. And so let's put a bunch of money into getting kids in pre-K where maybe parents actually want family child care, right? And so that those decisions that they're making on the state level really can be informed by the experience and um, desires of the community. So that's the main just and goal of the regional councils. Um, but we do also think it's gonna be important and what we've looked at in other states is by bringing a lot of different stakeholders together in this kind of regional structure, that there's a lot of times the community starts to really expand and improve their services on their own. And so it's really modeled after, like North Carolina does a lot of work already and um, Michigan does a lot of work. The goal of the councils is not put the onus on the provider and on the parent, but expand that voice to include elected officials, um, regional office of education, school board members, business community, um, higher education representatives. So really to expand that voice and understanding of really what's happening from the parent provider perspective and really build that advocacy. And so it's not just parents and providers saying, hey, we need this or we don't need this or we like this, but you really were trying to kind of harness and, and build the support of the business community to say, hey, we obviously the business community now after the pandemic is paying a little more attention to early learning, but to understand that really, if we don't have high quality accessible early learning across our state, our state just is not gonna do well. It's not gonna do well for a variety of reasons. We're gonna to continue to have kids who are not entering kindergarten ready. We know that's gonna affect the trajectory of their um, you know, educational career in our state. We're gonna have parents who don't have high quality education opportunities for a variety of reasons. So that's gonna um, impact our workers. Um, and then our community is just not gonna be very healthy, right? And so we need to expand that conversation past traditionally how it has been really on the backs of parents and, and providers. Um, in addition, we the commission rec or recognized that a lot of the local collaborative work is really done um, in scarcity. And so some have lots of money, some have no money, some have staff, some are all volunteer. And so that again, adds to the inequities across our system because some families and children have people who are advocating and helping them navigate. Others have no one and they're kind of left alone in a very confusing system. And so we're setting up these regional councils to have staff. And so each region will have three staff um, to really do like the backbone infrastructure work so that the council can really kind of come to a meeting, explore whatever topics they're looking at, and then our, our staff can put the reports together and get all the data and all those kind of things. And so again, it's not left on communities who either have some local funding invested in their local collaboratives or local collapse who are 
still doing good work, but are really doing it, you know, when they have time outside of their regular jobs. And so that is the kind of model we're going after. So we can make sure everyone in the state is covered with the same, um, you know, staffing and support from our state office. And then the state office will kind of do the legwork to making sure all of this is synthesized in some kind of report once we get that direction from the state and that we get it to the governor's office and IDHS and, you know, a variety of people. So people just have a better idea of like how they're funding decisions um, and how the governance is helping or hurting, you know, our students. I think everyone agrees now that the funding is just way too complicated and, you know, makes for a lot of uh, different um, outcomes in the communities. But I think we don't really know what those outcomes are aside from saying like, okay, well, we're losing kids in pre-K or we don't have enough Head Start spaces. We don't really know why that is. Um, and I think people tend to, particularly where there's no local collabs, make a lot of assumptions and we expect parents to kind of come forward and tell what's happening and really not necessarily being mindful that parents don't all know how to do that, don't have the time to do that, don't necessarily want to do that. And we can't continue to put that onus on the parents who are also trying to navigate the super confusing kind of system that we set up in, in Illinois. So that's kind of the high level of what we're doing in terms of how it um, will impact or not impact local collabs. We really look at this as being um, a partnership. And so local collabs are doing the work in their local communities, really a lot of them that I've talked to are matching parents and families with the services they need. <laughs> Excuse me, our regional councils are not designed to do that. We're really designed to like understand what the collabs are doing or where there's no collab, just kind of what the community is doing and the, the community need is across a region. And so obviously the local collabs are usually focused on just their communities, which is important. This is gonna bring all of the communities together as like one entity. And when I say bring them together, really just bringing together the landscape of early learning and the experience of parents and providers in that community, um, because that's really gonna be the best way to make sure and get that to the governor or whoever else so that they can understand it. Um, you know, we, we can't really sustain a system that's going, you know, community or municipality or township by township, right? That would just be kind of too much information. And we start looking at hopefully trying to make some changes in Springfield, particularly around funding streams that we, we need to have a model that kind of covers a little more geographic space because then we can say, okay, well, Effingham really needs more school buildings, right? They really need more center-based care. That's what the parents need and they need it on the east side of town or the east side of the region, right? Versus like going community by community would just be really hard for the state to, you know, make decisions in that way. The state's just kind of too big and spread out. And so that's the, the model we're using. And so we kind of see, not in a hierarchy, but just if we had like a map that the, the community collabs are usually down here in their community and we're just kind of gathering that information here. And so we are not going to be in the business of matching parents to services. We're not going to be in the business of really expanding services unless that's a recommendation that the community has and we'll, you know, kind of advocate on their behalf for that. But a lot of the things that, that you all, I assume you all are doing in terms of really getting the parents the services and getting the families and children the services and, and connect it into those programs is not something that we're going to be set up to do. Um, the other thing about local collapse that we're working through now is that we do have some funding to try to do some support of local collabs. It is not a big pool of funding. I try to always preference that, um, but it's really to help collabs do that work, to help collabs match, get kids in programs, whether that's a family-based, center-based, half-day, full-day, you know, EI, PI, whatever that is, right? And so, um, you know, that might be looking to increase a staff to do outreach, or maybe that's just an outreach program that you have that you want to expand. Um, and then the other kind of money for local collab work is where there are no local collabs, people would like to start one. There's some funding to help them kind of start the planning process and getting people in a room to think about how they might start a local collab and what that looks like and building capacity around there. So that's kind of the other support piece we have for local collabs. We hope to get out the door and, um, you know, all the framework and everything set up internally so we can kind of promote that in probably it's going to be late February, maybe early March. Um, and then that funding will be for a year and people can, you know, apply to renew. We're trying to get the application to a point where it's really easy to access. We understand we don't want to create more inequities because we also have inequities in our system in terms of the RFP process because everyone doesn't have time and a staff to do an RFP. And so trying to make it really easy to access for everybody across the state um, and have some support for them to not only apply, but then to implement the funding as well. So I will stop there because that's kind of the, the big picture. I will always say, so I've been here four months. We have the staff now of six people um, who have been here less than four months. Um, we, we try to take the commission report and be as true to it as we can. 
there have been some changes, you know, before I got here when Ceci and Teresa were kind of going around the state talking about this, they made some changes based on feedback. We've made some changes as a team based on feedback. I imagine from today until, you know, the end of the year, there'll be some more changes based on feedback, but really the goal is for us to provide the infrastructure. We, we have some um, things we really can't bend on, but we're trying to be as flexible as possible um, with communities in terms of kind of how they do this work. We need to produce a report at the end of this year. And so that already is a heavy lift. We didn't really, um, we're not asking the, the councils to do anything else really in the first year aside from this kind of regional scan, um, a regional um, kind of feedback loop with the parents and providers. Um, because it, again, it's just going to be a heavy lift for the first year because, you know, community action councils will start based on community interest. And so some might, you know, be ready to go in March and others, you know, where we don't have a lot of community interest might take a little while, but we want them all to be able to produce the same report in December. So when the funding and governance recommendations go forward, we make sure every region um, is represented in that, that report of parent narrative. So I will stop for some questions and have a sip of tea. That was really helpful. Thank you for that overview. I feel like I've heard kind of an overview before, but that that really was a lot, clarified a lot of things for me. So thank you. I have one um, kind of system overarching question, which is how how is this work gonna integrate or interact with the existing, the state's existing early learning council? Um, so we, we you know, meet with them. So the state's early learning, well, there's two things about the early learning councils. They are on a PG, I'm an acronym. Anyway, they're on a grant that's kind of run out net this year. And so they're trying to figure out their sustainability plan. Um, so the most of our work probably with them and a lot of our conversations with them has been about the Family Action Council because they want that to remain. I mean, they want all their work to remain, but that's kind of a, a body of work that they've talked to us about bringing into kind of our fold of work. So that will probably, if we can figure out how to do that, that would be kind of the biggest way. Um, other than that, I mean, you know, they're kind of setting the state's priorities and things, and we're really part paying attention and, and participating, but our goal is to make sure, because even in that work, right, the parent voice is not centered there. Um, and so our, vo our role really is going into community and making sure parent voice is kind of gathered and understood and kind of synthesized in a way that we can bring it to the state and say, hey, this is what's happening across the state, this is what's happening in each region, but then also like these are themes that we're seeing, right? So parents are saying whatever the themes are, right? So we can really communicate that in a way that our legislators can understand it. And so when they go to make decisions, it's not either overwhelming for them or it's not, you know, in a way in which they could ignore and say like, well, we made the you know best guess we could, right? That's gonna really be our role as a state office to make sure that we're clearly articulating. And that's just really not the focus of the Early Learning Council. So we have picked up on I'm not picked up on, but we have um, prioritized the, the priority populations that they've identified. We will identify or we will make sure are identified in our regions. Obviously their commitment to racial equity, um, we're holding on to, but in terms of like the work that they're doing every day, we're just kind of checking in, but we don't really, we're not really doing the same stream of work. What about um, raising Illinois? Are you guys, um do you have anything to do with them or no so again we've had, the same thing? <laughs> we've, we've had some meetings with them um we don't you know it's it's i think with all things there's a lot of initiatives and and there's always i guess particularly going to be some overlap when you're working in early learning but i mean I, I think the commission and the governor's office decided to move forward with this initiative because there there really is not statewide a way in which to capture what's happening with parents right and we continue to say and a lot of different initiatives, you know, that parents are important um, and, you know, things like that, but we haven't shown that as a state, right? Or we've, we've done it in some places, but not other places. And so we really have tried to kind of keep our head down and be really focused to what our mission is. Um, and so we do, you know, have go to different meetings and check in with people, but we're really trying to stay hyper-focused on making sure we can get these councils up because other than that, we'll continue with the same system where some some parents are heard depending on maybe their affluence or their state rep or whatever else and then some communities go totally with no parent voice i, I was wondering if there is um 
a formula, you know, each ROE has a number of counties. Are there a certain number of people from each county or how are those committees going to be put together? Yeah, so we're starting with a framework of about um, 15 and that number was kind of decided before I got here, but I think part of it was like trying to get a manageable number of people, right? And so, um, and that would include, you know, business community, parents, um, local collabs, providers, and that includes, you know, Head Start, family, you know, a variety of providers, um, community members, just in general, some parents, um, I'm missing somebody, but we don't, again, we don't have like a firm, it has to be 15, so there might be some communities that are less than 15, there might be some that are a little more, we, we do want it to be a, a council that actually, you know, when they get together can actually get some work done. The other part that I did forget to say in centering parents is that we, we have a plan and a goal for family councils as well, and so a region will have kind of an action council and a family council. They will be parallel, not, they will do the, the work parallel, but we wanna make sure again, we have we have parent voices centered. So we need to have more parents than we do all the other people. Um, and we thought having a parent council be separate might give them a little more flexibility in terms of the time that they're meeting. If you have one with business leaders and other folks, they might wanna meet during the day where parents might wanna meet on a Saturday or, you know, so that everyone has flexibility so we can make the meetings accessible. The other piece about the parent part is that we wanna make sure that if we have this group of business leaders and so on and so forth, if they say, hey, their issue is whatever, we need childcare at night. We don't wanna go forward with that recommendation. We wanna to go to the parents and say, okay, this is what they're thinking based on data or whatever they're doing. Like, what do you think? What, what is the issue for you with X, Y, and Z, right? So we wanna make sure nothing goes out of our region without it being kind of looped through by parents. And really not only just the parent council, but Part of the staff will have as a, a family engagement manager, right? And so that person's job will be, even if you have a family council, making sure they're going out to all the places to make sure, again, we have all the family voice possible and all the provider voice possible because the 15 people on the, on the council or the 15 people on the family council don't represent the entire region. So we still have to go outside of there to make sure we're capturing everyone's opinion best we can. That's really exciting. Just to give you a, a little bit of background, you may already know this um, about the work that this group has been doing for the past year um, has really been kind of really aligned with what you're talking about, looking at the Slack app, trying to figure out what the needs of the community is, matching it with the needs of the providers, really getting those voices heard and trying to figure out ways to expand care and what that care should look like. Um, but the, the biggest issue we had you know, with limited time, limited resources is getting parent voices. Um, we did a community survey out to parents to find out what their, what their real needs are, what their challenges are, what they're struggling with. And um, it's hard to get, we struggled to get the voices of the parents that are the most in need. Um, so I feel like there's a lot of information that this group can share with their council um, that they've done. And we do have some surveys back that are really helpful, but having that additional work done to really get to those other voices is, is wonderful. Um, this group does definitely have some, you know, identified priorities for what Effingham needs to be able to expand care that I think could be really helpful. Yeah. And I mean, we, again, we're, so in our state office, we have two family and community engagement staff who will kind of oversee a plan for the state and you know benchmarks and things. And then for that regional um, office, we will have kind of a council manager, family community engagement, and then like an admin data person. And so um, that might fluctuate. We know we've, I've heard from some people you know, in very rural parts of the state that say, hey, we need maybe just one regional manager across a couple of regions, but more family community engagement because we're so spread out. And so again, that's where I say we're, we have an infrastructure kind of in mind for the whole state but we also want to make sure this works for the regions, right? And so we don't have unlimited capacity. So we will have, you know, to, if, if regions say like, you know, we're going to work best, we already are working as kind of two regions just based on location and such. And we can make that work to make sure again, throughout, if we're going to, if we ever combine two regions, like all the parents matter within the region, within both regions, right? And so um, that, that's going to be the work of not only our state office, but also the regional office. And I always say that we're not going to be, 
the family engagement that does like spaghetti dinner and childcare and flyers at the laundromat and say we did family engagement, right? Like we are gonna have to push ourselves much further. Also respecting that families a lot of times are also at capacity and tired and have filled out a million surveys before. And right, so part of our work also is gonna be when we get to that engagement, like to circle back with people to say what we did with it. Because we don't, you know, we, we are not policymakers. We don't have any funding and governance authority, but we'll work really hard to make sure the voice gets to those people but it might be that nothing happens. We might, you know, get to January and, you know, whatever, like nothing might happen, but we have to be honest with people. Like we've, we've used your input. This is how we use it. This is what we found. But at the end of the day, we, you know, no, nothing, no decisions were changed. And I think part of the frustration that I hear is that people say, I've been on this committee and that committee and done all these surveys and focus groups. And then, you know, we're still having the same experience. And so I think we're going to try to make sure that we kind of have that feedback loop with people. So just from my own uh, information, because I'm still learning the state, uh, is Effingham like an entire region on its own? Is it a county within a region? I see some people are from region three, just from the Zoom call. When we started our community-based planning um, with Illinois Action for Children, we chose to work as a county. So, um, so when you see Effingham, it's Effingham County. We are part of regional um, office of education number three, but this is real challenge for us because that stretches pretty much from Indiana to Missouri across. Mm -hmm. So it's, you know, they're, they have the whole state. So I can certainly see where having multiple family engagement people would be very helpful, I think. Yeah. And if we don't have, again, we have, you know, we don't have unlimited funding, but because we have the two staff here, part of their role is gonna be you know, whether it's we're in the space of traveling and they're, you know, traveling and, and trying to do that family engagement piece um, or they're supporting, you know, we can be making phone calls and things here and, and matching um, the staff there with, with people we've made contact with already. We currently have um, area, co area coordinators who are working and so there's six of them. They're, we're using the map for that, which is an ISB map that's where it splits the state into six regions. And so we're using that map now. So we have a area coordinator in each region and they're kind of going out now to do this kind of thing, right? Talking to people, educating them on what we're doing, um, all those kind of things. So trying to kind of build the database of contacts. And so when we do have staff, they're not just starting from ground zero. Um, and for those staff, I will just tell you, cause you know, we're gonna be hiring pretty soon. <laughs> our goal is gonna be after our February launch to hire 38 of the regional council managers. Um, I say 38 because Chicago is its own region and its own, own ball of wax. Um, so we're going to be hiring for, across the state. And then as we get the managers, then we will start hiring for those um, family community engagements. So obviously they can participate in hiring their own staff. Um, at the same time, after that, the kickoff next week, we'll put those job descriptions out. We'll also put out interest forms. So people who are interested in being on the council or the family council um, can just kind of fill out an interest form and let us know they're interested. Our goal for those um, building, particularly the regional action council, um, fingers crossed that we can make this happen, will be to have some community members who help us with that process because, again, we as a state office should not necessarily be choosing people for your, your, your um, action council. And so we have kind of an equity matrix to make sure we can try to get a diverse group of voices um, in a variety of, of ways. And so we'll have you know, ideally some, some people in the community can kind of just help us ship through applications and making sure people live in the region in which they want to sit on the council, or at least they work in that region. Um, and then, you know, once we have a staff to go ahead and start kind of developing that council. And as I was saying earlier, Carla, we kind of have an idea of 15 people, but if it's, you know, if it's eight and we start with eight or if it's 12, or, you know, so we, we have some flexibility. We just really want to be mindful of the numbers so that we don't get so big that it becomes unproductive. Oh, this is Norbert Saltwedel. I'm a member of the FM County Board, and we have just recently uh, named a committee, or we have actually, we have designated that we want to have a committee to look into the uh, issue of child care and early learning. And I think our primary emphasis initially would be on capacity, trying to uh, increase the number of providers that uh, would take care of children and provide good education for them. 
Um, but what, what do you see an organization such as our committee doing in conjunction with the Birth to Five program? Well, we would love for someone to, you know, represent your committee on the, the council if someone was interested in that. If not, because again, we, we want to be super respectful of people's time. Our staff's job, just as we're doing the um, family outreach, will be community outreach, right? And so sitting with our staff, helping them understand what you've done, kind of where barriers are. Um, because another part of this work not only is getting kind of the, the region voice parent provider up to the state, but we hope and we'll have some support there for if you all, and you sounds like you've already done this, but as regions come together, there might be some ways in which they can increase capacity just as the people in the room, right? So bringing in a variety of different people who are in the room, I say, hey, we can we can help do that. Or, you know, I have some support who can help do that. And so um, so it's kind of twofold, but, but to your point, I think just helping us understand what has already been done in Effingham. And so that we kind of are one step ahead in, in that way. Um, for the, at least the, the regional report. And then our staff can kind of say, okay, in Effingham, they've identified X, Y, and Z. And if we know of some, you know, whether it's funding or, you know, other, other ways in which we can help you build capacity, we can go ahead and start getting those resources to you already. Now, we don't have a lot of resources in our office for, you know, to help you build capacity, but we definitely always are talking to people, their foundations, you know, there's, there's different funding streams that seem to be popping up outside of COVID that we definitely want to make sure people are aware of. Unfortunately, sometimes, you know, the communities have to have done the planning that you guys have already done to access the fund. And so if we know you guys have already done that, we can make sure our staff is at least pointing you in the right direction for some things. But Norbert, to your point, I think really, I would love for someone from your committee, if they would like to be on the council, if not, that we would make sure you sit down with the staffing and kind of do a brain dump of what you've already identified and kind of what you all's plans are as a community moving forward. This does seem like the perfect um, vehicle to move this whole conversation forward from our perspective. We've done a lot of the research and we hope for um, a lot of cent um, central and rural Illinois as a lot of our communities look similar. So we're excited about this. Well, great. I mean, I think, again, we, 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 have, a, we have a lot to do. We have a lot of bold plans. Um, so we're, we're moving as fast as we can. We do think that you know, come February, we'll be in a good place after our kickoffs. And our kickoffs are really just this. It's a more formalized structure, obviously, but um, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday of next week, we will have 39 sessions or 38 sessions. <laughs> so we're doing these Zoom sessions. People can opt in based on, again, either where they have service provision or where they um, live into their regions. And so we'll have 13 calls per night um, and it'll kind of do a 15 minute kind of pre-recorded overview, some welcomes and such. And then we'll break into regional conversations where you'll go over with Action for Children. They have our um, technical training contract. And so they've kind of made these data slides. A lot of it you guys might know, but obviously it'll be by the whole region where they kind of go over the slot gap analysis and some other higher level numbers, demographics and such. And then just kind of get people thinking of themselves as a region. And then from there, we'll go right into the work of hiring people and trying to put the councils together. And then the councils through act through our contract with action will have access to some training. And so again, some of this might be repeat for you all, but understand we're expanding the, the scope here of work to include people who aren't historically in the early learning world. We just want to do some real um, concrete training with them. Um, part of that's going to really be data because we, we want to be data driven, but we also need to be really honest about the pitfalls of some of the Illinois data and some places where we're overcounting or undercounting students. And then again, that the data doesn't always reflect the parent experience. And so we can't just assume because people aren't using family child care that that means they don't, they prefer center base, right? There's a lot of layers to that that we really need to make sure we understand. And so bringing in folks who don't always look at Illinois data, we wanna make sure we're we're clear with what the data says. And then for each region, does the, does, does the data actually mirror the family experience? And will the, um... I know, of course, as you said, you have limited funding to be able to increase capacity, but there there is an amount that you're able to put in to, to help communities with this. Is there, will the councils be helping to, like there's a lot of, there's a lot of potential funding um, available for early childhood through rescue funds that 
still need to be allocated. And I know like this group has been working really hard with the county board to try and get some of those funds allocated specifically for work um, early childhood workforce. Will regional councils help communities with kind of um, like leveraging that information, sharing it? Um, you know, you mentioned legislators, but I'm looking more at like the local level. Will they help with that? Yeah, so I, I was trying to say like they do, Megan is, you know, stay in kind of in our scope of capacity to build and they will definitely, as you know, all the information we have, we definitely will filter down to everyone. Um, I think it's gonna a little bit depend on our staff. And so we're hiring a staff who's gonna be our kind of grants and I think community relations. And so their, their scope of work is gonna be to do more of this, right? And so to talk about the funding we have for local collabs, existing ones and ones that wanna start, but then also that piece of like sustainability, particularly for local collabs. The piece is about, you know, for child care provision itself. So, you know, money that might be available for home child care providers to expand their services are definitely things that we will make sure our staff, the regional staff have and are filtering out to their community. Um, in terms of they'll have time to really help people, I think that's just going to depend on where they are with their work for the council itself. So if, if they have a council that's up and running and kind of really in a good space and they have time to do that, they will do that. That's not really their total scope of work. Um, because they just, you know, we might be in some places where they're like, hey, I, I still only have five people who want to be in this council. And like, right, I'm like, their work is really trying to recruit people. Because unfortunately, no matter how many people we have in a council, we still have to produce these reports uh, because we don't want any region to go unrepresented to the, to the state office. And so, you know, I think it's going to fluctuate a little bit. We're going to have as much communication and support out there as we can, but we really have to be true to like our scope of work is getting this report done because, I mean, we will be a total failure if we present to, you know, the governor's office or whatever office a report that has 30 regions, right? And we wouldn't be doing justice to the, the students in those other nine regions. Um, so I hate to, I mean, I, I wanna say support, but I don't want to give a wrong picture of like how much support they can give because it's really gonna vary by region, how much time they'll have based on the other work they have to do. Sure, yeah, I appreciate that. I know there's varying levels of readiness for this kind of work and um, yeah, there, I just, I know there are at least a handful of communities that have really, you know, done a lot of work around this already. And I, I don't want that window to close on the funding. Yeah. <laughs> but, and um, again, because, I mean, you know, communities like yourself and others who have been working with action, um, I guess I can loop back with action, but I would hope that they are in their CS3 work also getting you all that information and, you know, all those yeah. funding opportunities as well, right? Because Again, you're, you're having him, you've done a lot of work, but we also have the rest of the region that our council needs to make sure we represent and the staff is making sure, I don't know how hard it would be for us to get representatives from other pieces of the region, right? And so they have to do that work as well. Um, and we don't yeah. want to set up a dynamic where people start, well, how come Effingham's getting all this extra support and we're not, right? Because I, I will be very honest, in, in some communities, people are super excited. Other communities, people are like, wait a minute, what are you doing? You know, we don't want anybody else coming in. And we're, so we're trying to be super sensitive to a variety of responses to our work um, and gonna need to be, you know, hire a staff who can be, be the same, right? We're here to support and elevate the families and providers, but I think a lot of times there's not a lot of trust and we're new. And so we have to make sure we're building relationships and gathering trust before we come in and start then trying to be prescriptive about other things. Yeah. Absolutely, thanks, that's helpful. So if you haven't signed up or if you, you know, are interested in our mailing list or whatever, I put it all in the, our email in the, I mean, excuse me, our website in the chat. Um, I would just say real quick, so our website is live. It's in English, Spanish, and Polish. Um, all the materials we produce, our goal is English, Spanish, and Polish. If we get more capacity, we will start translating more things, but that's where we are now. Um, you can sign up by the region you receive um, services in or the region you live in if you want to sign up. Um, even if you don't come, if you sign up, that will allow us to have you on our list. And so after the sessions, everybody will get, you know, all the materials we presented online. So, we'll, you know, you get it in a, an email as well as those links to apply for the positions or be on the councils. It will all also be on our website, but, you know, if you sign up for ROE number three, which I don't even know what night that is, um, even if you don't come, it'll still allow us to make sure you get all the material we shared. So the pre-recorded video will be available. The slides will be available. The facilitated conversation will not be available because it's just 
a lot of work and we have to give people's permission to share their comments, but we will be producing kind of reports of what that kind of overall themes were in those conversations, probably a couple of weeks after the sessions end. Um, and so we're trying to kind of get information out every week. Um, and then, you know, by region, we'll start categorizing people's emails so that as things are happening in your region, or as we're looking for more people or whatever we're looking for, we can start kind of targeting emails by region. Well, if there's nothing else, I'm going to go. I have 10 minutes before my next meeting. I'm going to grab lunch. Thank you so much. This You're was welcome. really, really helpful um, and really exciting. I think this is a, a very exciting approach to the work and desperately needed. So thank you for really your time. So. Thank you all. And um, Kate has thank my you. email. I don't know how the email system went, but if anyone needs me directly, Kate has my email. Thank Alrighty. you, Cecily, and, and good luck with all those meetings. <laughs> Thank you. We're almost there. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Bye. -bye. <laughs> Take care. Bye. Wow, that's a lot of great information. And I believe our meeting is Tuesday night for ROE three. If you haven't registered already, so um, let's see. So how do you feel you. about that, like the work of this group with the new kind of regional council? Like, how do, how do you how do you feel about that? And how do you kind of envision it? Anyone? I mean, I should say so like this this is our last like official meeting of the community based planning but you guys are now a cohesive autonomous group that will go forward and jana has fully taken over she does the agenda she does the minutes i am now going by the wayside and like you've done so much work you have a plan you have a a supplementary workforce plan, you have work that's going on with the county board. Um, and I just I like I, I want to make sure that this doesn't feel like, oh, great, we're starting over again, with like this regional council coming in, but like, I want you to feel empowered to inform that work. Um, so yeah, I guess I'm just wondering how you y'all are feeling about it. I know I'm a latecomer to the group, but uh, I feel that this group is a local orientation, whereas the council is more a state orientation. I mean, they're talking about the possibility of merging three agencies that oversee all of the things that happen at the local level. They're talking about consolidating funding at various programs into a, a single Package, you might say. To me, it's it's beyond us, and it's not that it's not important, but I, I feel like the our challenge is locally trying to solve the problems we have here, and maybe using that council as a resource to uh, get into the areas where we might not otherwise have influence. Uh, and I particularly have heard providers enumerate several things that they feel that the state agencies are uh, onerous about and and so you know if if we can identify those i mean i think this listening session that we're talking about doing with the various uh in-home providers is an opportunity to see what's wrong with the current system and then if there is something wrong with it try to obtain a, some changes uh, because for some reason, these people have left the business. Others are not wanting to go into the business. Many of them are doing it outside of the purview of, the, of, of having a license. So I don't know whether it's broke or not, but it kind of seems like maybe it is. Uh, I personally would be more than happy to serve on that council and I will apply um, to, to serve on that. 
I, I would like, I think that it's going to be a forum to um, understand what everyone else is doing and maybe bring ideas back that would be helpful in our county. Um, you know, once you listen, the, I mean, these ROEs are huge, so there's a lot of counties involved. So I think it's good to have one of us from this committee uh, serve on that and be able to bring feedback uh, that might be beneficial to what we're doing locally, uh, and then to be sure that we're still connected with the state to get their recommendations or funding or, you know, anything that sounds like, you know, they're, they're trying to match you up with what's out there. And uh, so I, you know, I'm more than happy to, to be that person and, and do that as a resource to this group. But I think Norbert's right. We already know what our problem is. And actually, if, if we had to um, generalize, we're going to spend a year thinking about uh, what the needs are, and we kind of already know. And it's probably every county is in the same boat <laughs> uh, throughout the state because this is nationwide. So I think they're going to find out what we found out. But maybe that's the only way that we can get a voice in the state, though. And I can tell you on my end that, um, you know, while they're in the process of putting this whole system together and they're um, having these launch meetings, everybody's got a regional coordinator, um, which is where I collected those names to submit to the regional coordinator. She's aware of this group. She knows that there is a group in Effingham that's been working on, on this for quite some time. So um, I've definitely made sure that, um, that this group will have some kind of voice and some kind of say, um, and if it's in some capacity, I, I don't have any power. I don't mean to make it sound like I do, but just to let you guys know that the regional coordinator does know that there's been work happening in Effingham and that there, there are resources available, um, you know, if that, if that helps you guys at all. But um, that's definitely a plus with you guys having formed this, this group for, and, you know, have so many things established already, it's going to definitely benefit Effingham County because you guys are ahead of the game. This is all great to hear what all three of you have said. And yeah, I think that's exactly right. Just use this regional council to your benefit. You guys are really well placed to um, take advantage of any funding or support that they, they can offer wanted to chase that um kate i too picked up on the grant opportunities because always looking for those um i wondered i thought i'd follow up there's supposed to be one for working through like having a local person to match parents to services and that's something we've talked about in our community and also um just funding for the collaboration as a whole to help kick it off because honestly kate we're kind of a loose organism <laughs> We will continue to meet. I don't know that we'll do it every month, but we need to continue to meet to keep these um, processes moving forward. But we want to um, we want to do that under the county's new system. Yet at the same time, I figured I would continue to let this group know what's happening, and we can always connect with people as we need to and bring them in so that the county group feels like they're being educated enough and that they have enough um, support across the community so that they're informed, well-informed, because I think that's why this group has worked is because we had the right people in the room. Um, so I was gonna pay attention to that. And Carla, I really appreciate you stepping forward and being willing to be that person for, is there two councils? It sounds like there's an action council and a family council, is that right? If so, I. I would really love to see some family step forward. And that's a huge ask from our community, but to be part of that conversation. Because I think that is where they'll hear the most. And there doesn't have to be just one person from our group. 
because we have a lot of people <laughs> in, in our total group. So I'm sure that several should volunteer or apply or whatever. I think I already have, but I honestly, it's been such a whirlwind of a month. I don't want to say that out loud without following up. I know I'm attending the meeting, but I think I've already, I think I've already, <laughs> if that helps. Yeah, it's it does. Thank you, Samantha. Yeah. I do think the challenge will be reaching these families because that was tough. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I'm very curious to see what additional strategies they implement. I mean, if they have multiple staff where that's their, that's their job, hopefully they can um, elevate those voices but it's definitely, they definitely have their work cut out for them. That's for sure. There is a, um, like a coalition called Right to Care. Have you guys heard of that? I'll put it in the chat, but I mean, it's more of like a nation thing, I think, or I'm sorry, a state thing. Um, but it's like, they have all kinds of like social media, like assets that you can use. Um, and it's basically like getting parents to talk about their experience with child care. Um, and you know why it's important to them that we make this a priority in the state. So they can share it to their Facebook or we can share, you know, what people have posted or whatever. Thanks, Sadie. That sounds great. I didn't know about that. Yeah, there's so many different it's because it's like there's so much going on policy wise like there's so many different like coalitions that's why I asked about raising Illinois because it's like even this is like a government thing but it's like a separate thing um like a different foundation so and John I'll share some other stuff just that I have just to see if it's you think the group could benefit from it or I'll put it in the email with everybody's sure, do that, Sadie. I'll send it out to everybody because that okay. the information that we share with one another, it always generates more thoughts and keeps people engaged. I think it's good. Right. And every, anything I've like meetings I've gone to with Raising Illinois or uh, Illinois NAEYC, even like you we're all talking about the same things <laughs> because like Carla said, it's nationwide. So it's the families, it's the workforce, it's the kids, it's, it's all of it. So Samantha, how did you um, how did you volunteer ahead of time to the birth to five? Is there something I should do besides just be one of the applicants after the sessions? I think I just signed up for the session, but I thought that they had a yes. box or something that I checked that said, "Are you interested in being?" Oh, okay. When I signed up, I thought I I, that, I think I did it right when I got it because that's. Um, but okay, I, I, I probably, that I, I probably did too. I think um, I put a button on there giving them permission to reach out to me to be on the council because I remember. Okay, yes, I did that. Permission. Okay, that was what it was. Because <laughs> I'm not, yeah. Yeah, yeah I was going to say there's nothing official out. There's no official applications no, or anything. It was but, just a yeah, button. Just a check <laughs> button. Yeah. Saying, yeah, you can. Yeah. And, you know, we want to make sure at least one person out of this group is there, is there because it is multiple counties. So it's not like it's just concentrated in Effingham. It's a multiple county since it's broken up through the ROE. So we want to make sure that we've got at least one person um, to represent Effingham because if we can get one person to represent the group, then I mean, that's better than nothing, obviously. So. And if I'm Sadie and let us and Sadie, let us know if we can help you with other things too. I mean, you've got a huge since you're kind of representing the ROE as you're thinking about people and let us know if we can help you in some way. Yes, Courtney's definitely. got good connections, she does throughout. Because how many counties do you manage, Courtney? We have 12 that we yeah. service through our office. So yeah, we have a and you know, of course it's rural. So we're spread out pretty far. I mean, we're everywhere from Effingham, Richland, Lawrence, Clay, all the way up to Jefferson and Marion. So we're spread out in a pretty good area. And actually with them doing all of this um, changing with the ROEs, 
since we do have the 12 counties that involves us in three ROE. So yeah, it's a lot. But that would be, Courtney, it'd be a great connection for you, Sadie, as you try to find some other people for that. You know, you ought to nominate and help people. Otherwise, they don't know what's happening and they don't realize what's going on. We're all just so busy, you know, unless, unless you encourage other people, good people to help. <laughs> this doesn't happen. And I think somebody gave me your name, Sadie, to submit to the um, regional coordinator so that you would you'd be able to get the information. Okay, awesome. It might have been Julie, the superintendent here. I'm going to attend these meetings and keep her filled because she's the boss. So <laughs> she's got all the connections to the, the grants and fundings and stuff like that. So I kind of just wanted the other things I wanted to bring. I don't want to shift the topic a little bit, but we're kind of, um, I just want to make sure that I hit on all the other things that's happening in our county and in our group. Um, the Safe Sitter Project was funded, so we're going to kick those um, meetings off. We'll start, or those trainings off in March. We're excited about those. We get to have six this year, and that was um, through a grant with the Seamer Foundation. Um, and the University of Illinois case study for early childhood in Elgin and Effingham, that is underway. We're really excited to be working with Catherine Core, And again, that's another project through um, Illinois Action for Children. We're excited to see that. So some of you will be hearing from Catherine because she's going to be reaching out and following up. So just excited to see what happens next. I wondered about um, determining next steps. We still have our um, workforce development strategy that is still in place and still moving forward on that. Um, and we have our piece at the county that's moving forward. Is there anything else that you guys can see? We've had some people say they'll be happy to nominate and make sure that we have someone on this group Anything else that you guys see that we need to be working on? I know that birth to two for childcare is huge. Playing that out. And if not, um, I kind of wondered about sending back out to our um, group, like an email after that February meeting as the county board solidifies who's gonna be, who's gonna have that all together. I wondered about just sending out an email to our group and maybe going to a quarterly meeting just so we keep each other informed. And yet at the same time, we're not overwhelming each other with, with things. Does anybody have any thoughts about that or? No major thoughts. I'm okay though with quarterly meetings. Um, I think like just in the past year, I think we've all kind of shown that when we need to meet over things that pop up, you know, we can be flexible and do that. And um, I think with the pace of where we're at now, we kind of have all of these ripple effects that are happening that um, will give us enough to be able to report on, you know, every three months as opposed to every month. So I'm good with that. Thanks, Megan. Anybody else feedback on that or? I agree with Megan. I feel like we've all been together long enough that if we need to send something out, we can all just get it sent out and, you know, get feedback that way. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm fine with every three months also. Thanks, Shelly. Okay. Well, if that is where we're at, <laughs> then I think we might be able to wrap up a little early. <laughs> Kate, do you have anything you'd like to talk to us about? I just want to say that, I, yeah, I think you guys are such a well-running um, group and so responsive. I think quarterly meetings is a great idea. And just to remind you, and I know, Jana, you've, um, or I can resend the link, but if at any point you want, you need something that you feel like can help the group through a you know, challenge or hurdle, the CS3 team um, has their on-demand service that um, I can, I was just looking for the link and I,
course can't find it right now, but I will, and I'll send it so that if at any point something comes up, you just can fill out that link for some um, on-demand support through them. Um, but I, it has been such an honor and a pleasure to get to know all of you. Um, I really love Effingham and wish I were closer. And I'm giving you all a virtual hug and high five for all your great work. And I'll be following it from afar just to see what happens and read the um, the what is a policy brief or, or case study that's being done because um, I feel like Effingham is an example that the entire nation should see of um, really, really committed, powerful uh, early childhood team. So thank you for indulging me during this past year. Thank you, Kate. Um, Kate, Kelly, I had a question for you. Is, are there any job fairs coming out? Uh, speaking of workforce development, uh, is Lakeland got anything going or? Um... Last thing I knew they were virtual. Um, so, but we did hire somebody in career services full-time finally. So I am hopeful that here soon we will be having one. I will reach out to our career services office and shoot you an email with a date if we have one set. Okay, thank you. Yep. Please do, Kelly, because Beth Wise is also looking for that as well. So, okay. yep, I will fact, find out. If you can do one just around early care, I, I would love to do that. <laughs> that'd be awesome. Let me talk. Let me see what I can do. Okay. Awesome. Thanks. Yep. And thank you, Kate. It's been a pleasure working with you. It's been a pleasure working with everybody on this team. This has been incredible. We have done some fantastic work. So, I'm really looking forward to seeing what comes next. Um, I was just putting me. my, um, I just had a, a memory that I, Amanda's not on here, but that the foundation had been interested in pursuing, like supporting an effort to support local dedicated funding. Um, and just that if she ever wants to pick that ball up, she can definitely reach out to me. Um, I'm putting, John, I'm just sending you my email address through the children's funding project because that's we have an arm that really focuses on that and they can um, put additional money in with the, the foundation's money um, through I think like bomber group or something some other foundation that we get funding through to to help support if that effort you know wants to if they want to initiate that effort I just Thank remember you. that was Norbert. like a conversation from several months ago, so. <laughs> yeah, no, that conversation continues. Norbert is very aware of that conversation. They've had some changes at the foundation and it's now an Alex that's heading that up. So there's some, you know, they're trying to work out and get up to speed, okay. but no, that conversation's continuing. So thank you for that. Yep, no problem. Well, if there's nothing else, then have a great afternoon, everyone. Stay warm and enjoy the week. Thank you.